Hello everybody, my name is Massimo Di Marzio, Italian anesthetist, 43 years old, and this is me, thinking and thinking about airway management. I would like to show the MAC and J model that I've done in the last uh, seven years, which could help you in your daily job in surgery room or emergency department. Before starting, don't forget that every specialist should follow specific scientific guidelines in airway management. How many times do you observe the patient position before performing a laryngoscopy or inserting a supraglottic device? How many times do you choose an airway management device in relation to the patient position? How many times do you proceed to change the patient position in case you need to change an airway management device? MAC and J is an anatomical model, so before doing a laryngoscopy or introducing a supraglottic device, you should pay attention to your patient position, because most of your job and the device that you are going to choose will depend on it. Many of us, when they have to manage the airways, think only of direct laryngoscopy, so they use the same pillow as a result to get what they think is a proper flexion of the neck and extension of the head. The model instead suggests to observe well the shape of the patient's body to obtain three possible positions using pillows with different thickness or no pillow. For each of the three possible positions, it will result in the possibility to choose different airway management devices. There are three possible patient positions, the MAC position, the half J position and the J position. You can choose to work with the patient position or you should necessarily work with the patient position. In MAC position, all three anatomical axes, oral, pharyngeal and laryngeal, tend to be parallel, three out of three. In half J position, only two anatomical axes, pharyngeal and laryngeal, tend to be parallel, two out of three. In J position, there is no parallelism between the three anatomical axes, zero out of three. MAC position relates to the patient's body shape, so you should reduce the thickness of the pillow because it will be necessary to obtain the head hyperextension. MAC position relates to MAC devices, every laryngoscope which works with a Macintosh blade, both for direct or video laryngoscopy. MAC devices relates to your lifting force. Half J position relates to the patient's body shape too but you should increase the thickness of the pillow till the level in which there will be no possibility to obtain the head hyperextension. Half J position relates to half J shape devices, both video laryngoscopes or supraglottic devices. Half J shaped devices are sliding devices. They don't relate with your lifting force. 
J position relates to the anatomical curve of the proximal airways, which has a J shape. J position relates to J shape airway management devices, both video laryngoscope or supraglottic devices. J shape devices are sliding devices. Sliding devices don't need your lifting force. As a consequence, the Mac and J model contains a sort of classification of airway management devices that relates to the three possible patient positions Mac position, Mac devices, half J position, half J devices, J position, J devices. There are many kind of video laryngoscopes. The Mac and J model suggests which one fits the patient position that you are going to adopt. Are you going to work in Mac position? You should choose a kind of Mac video laryngoscope that needs your lifting force. While if you are going to work in half J position or J position, you should choose other kinds of video laryngoscopes. You are going to choose sliding devices which don't need your lifting force. Half J video laryngoscopes for half J position or J video laryngoscope for J position. There are also different kinds of supraglottic devices. Supraglottic devices are only sliding devices. They don't need your lifting force when you are going to introduce them to obtain the patient ventilation. As you can see, there are half J shape supraglottic devices for half J position and J shape supraglottic devices for J position. Mac and J model suggest to use only second generation supraglottic devices which have three major characteristics the possibility to obtain gastric aspiration a cuff designed to deliver high seal pressures and an intubating capability using standard tubes to switch from a supraglottic airway management to a tracheal management It's difficult to say which is the best video laryngoscope or the best supraglottic device. But every time you can dispose of J-shaped video laryngoscope or J-shaped supraglottic device, you can also use them in the half J position by sliding them backwards if necessary after inserting them. In J position, something different happens because the half J shaped devices are not always able to slide along the whole anatomical curvature of the first airways. Video laryngoscopes force the operator to lift the instrument to obtain the intubation, while the supraglottic devices 
become more difficult to insert or can be expelled outwards immediately after the insertion maneuver. Every time we decide to intubate a patient in MAC position, it's correct to think that a better direct laryngoscopy obtained will correspond to an easier insertion of the tracheal tube. Every time we decide to use a MAC video laryngoscope with the monitor off, it's correct to think that we are performing a traditional direct laryngoscopy. As we already said, the MAC position is related to the MAC devices that depend on your lifting force. Some patient anatomical features can lead you to a situation of MAC difficult due to the impossibility of obtaining the alignment of the three axes. At this point, you can decide to perform a MAC video laryngoscopy. A MAC video laryngoscopy traction with the monitor off will confirm a bad Cormac Lane in direct vision, improving it by turning on the monitor but forcing you the same to an intubation maneuver with half J stylet because the patient's anatomy turns out to be that of a 2 out of 3 parallelism of the axis. In case of failed intubation, the model suggests to place the patient in half J position to work with the 2 out of 3 parallelism of the axis, but without engaging your left hand in the pulling force. Every time we decide to intubate a patient in half J position by sliding the video laryngoscope until the glossoepiglottic vallecula, we have to think and look for a worse laryngoscope image that reproduces a 2 out of 3 parallelism of the axis and allows us to insert the tube. Tracheal intubation requires your expertise and can be obtained both through the guide channel of the half J video laryngoscope or through the combination of a J-shaped video laryngoscope used in half J mode plus a curved tube with a half J stylet. J intubation is related to cases in which you probably have to necessarily intubate in J position. J video laryngoscope are made to obtain the best Cormac Lien in laryngoscopy, but unfortunately the intubation properly could be difficult because it's obtained only through a curvature of the tube with a J-shaped stylet. The best laryngoscopy corresponds to an easier intubation only in MAC position. At this point, in relation to the position of the patient and the parallelism of the anatomical axis, we know what choice to take in case we decide to perform an intubation or placing a supraglottic device. During the evaluation of the patient, you have to image to be in front of a traffic light and first rule out red light conditions that probably involve difficult ventilation in face mask and SAD or difficult positioning of every airway management devices. Secondly, exclude yellow light conditions that probably involve difficult intubation due to features that make you think of a MAC difficult or the need to operate in J position. Unfortunately, in green light conditions, the absence of alerts does not always correspond to an easy airway management.
all red light conditions involving anatomical and functional abnormalities of the head, face and neck should lead to further preoperative diagnostic investigations such as endoscopy and tomographic images, plus possible medical treatments. In any case, the most indicated choice would be an awake fiber optic intubation. Yellow light conditions should push you to check the airway management material before acting and reflect on a case-by-case -case basis whether to start with an intubation technique or with the placement of a supraglottic device. Even in green light conditions, you should reflect before acting on a case-by-case -case basis whether intubate the patient or placing a supraglottic device. After a careful preoperative evaluation of the patient and the check of the available material, you will decide for an approach like a awake fiber optic intubation, MAC or J. In all cases of MAC difficult, you will have to be ready to consider the failure of the initial plan and behave remembering that to move to the use of an alternative device you will first have to change the position of the patient. In cases where the intubation starts as necessary but is failed, or those in which the intubation becomes necessary, the low-skill FOI represent our safety technique. Low-skill fiber optic intubation is a safe technique but not infallible and in all cases in which it's carried out, we must consider not only the possibility that the patient is intubated, but also the one in which the supraglottic device is able to continue to guarantee ventilation, but with an intubation difficult to do, or worse, that one in which supraglottic device is no longer able to guarantee patient ventilation. Thank you for watching.